How's it going on guys? How are you doing? And welcome to a brand new video tutorial from I. Pretty much today we're gonna got a quick video tutorial, just a very simple and easy to follow up CSS animation tutorial. So we're gonna be just diving into how you can create a typewriter CSS animation using just only CSS and HTML. So we're not gonna include any JavaScript or any code uh, script or anything like that. We're just gonna be simply using normal uh, CSS code with some animation behind the scenes and of course just a simple uh, HTML code to make that happen. So um, Before jumping into that, I just want to use code sandbox. I'm just going to show you um, the quick preview in here So this is going to be the animation we're going to be creating at the end of this video tutorial So it's going to have like a simple and minimal typewriter animation in here. It's clear in here uh, if I just refresh that back again uh, I get this cursor, um, you know, blinking all the time, and I get the typewriter CSS text animation. Uh, it just shows it, you know, like you are writing it in real time. You can tweak out the values, I'm gonna be like the animation values to make it look like more realistic. And depending on your situation and how you wanna use it, you can pretty much tweak it out and you can have the most out of it. Uh, behind the scenes in here. So that's actually basically this animation we're going to be creating. And yeah, so I'm going to use a code sandbox, you can use whatever um, environments you want to work with, you can use code pen or anything like that. But I just prefer code sandbox because it's much easier to work with, and you know, have live edits and so on and so forth. So let's just jump right into it. So here we got a vanilla uh, sandbox we're going to be working on. So as clear as seen here, everything is just um, you know super basic. We don't have anything. Uh, we don't need the JavaScript code. So let's get rid of the script over here, and we can do is delete the JavaScript code or the index.js since we don't need any more. We got an empty body in here. So that's all you need. Just have an empty body and make sure to link your style dot scss. I named it scss because I want to use a sass as my preprocessor for the style. Uh, just to you know make it look much better and use comments and stuff you can still use CSS because you know it doesn't have anything related to that so it just depends on you and let me just change this to type um, so type writer CSS animation and there you go so first things first let's jump into the style.scss and start off with the first thing so I want to use the font. So yes, the font you saw earlier was from Google Fonts, and it was named Anonymous Pro uh, Fonts. So I'm just gonna do a real quick import these fonts because you can just go and Google out uh, Anonymous Pro, and you can just go to fonts.google.com, and you could probably um, learn more about these fonts and why it's super cool. So I just wanted to use that because it looks more to like a classical font, and you know it shows more. Uh, an effects of how typewriters works and it, it just best fits for this particular example. That's why I would love to use this in my case scenario. Uh, the other type of things all we're gonna do is just simple HTML. So I'm gonna do uh, HTML and I'm gonna have like make it take the full width. So I want the the HTML tag take the full width and the full height. Um, so just to make it take the full page, I'm gonna have an overflow of uh, hidden. So we're not gonna show up an overflow in here. The old thing, we're just doing a style to the body. This body, we're gonna to take a full width and a full height. Uh, for those of you who always follows me, um, they probably have noticed that my keyboard sound has been changed. That's why, I'm, uh, that's because actually I've, I've bought or I got a new uh, keyboard. So it's a much better, I think, for you guys to listen. So let me know in the comments if it just makes too much noise or anything because that's um, like a brown keys mechanical keyboard. So it might be a little bit louder than my previous keyboard. So I'm gonna do a height of 100% um, and um, I'm gonna change the font family for this. So I'm just gonna put it anonymous pro and if it doesn't find that or any issues happen behind the scenes, I'm just gonna fall back to uh, since serif, which is the default fonts. I'm gonna change the background color to be, I don't know, something like, um, okay, so you're gonna do, uh, it's gonna do like a color picker from the page. So it was this cool extension. And I'm gonna just call pick the, uh, the background right here. So I'm gonna choose something like this one, probably this place, there you go, it has been copied. I'm just gonna paste it in here and it should look dark like this editor is. So it should be a little bit much better because you know have like a, a white over 
some dark blue color so that's why i want to use the type uh, writer uh, effects right over there so that's for the background color and the body and the, and the html are both taking the full width and the full height of our canvas or our um, web page in here um, now for for the containers we don't have anything right over there so i'm going to just do a main container so this main container is going to hold up all the the typewriters text styles so if you have like uh, if you would love to add more than one you could just put them under this container and all they're going to have the same style applied which is pretty great actually so i'm going to make this take the full width and the full height again uh, i would love to use with containers better than just putting it on bare minimum on the body because it's much safer to work with and for the styling for anybody comes out he's going to understand what we're doing uh, plus it is responsively uh, you know it can, you can easily make it responsive by just putting containers and wrapping it up um, for this we're going to put a color of fff which is completely white i was curious in here for the color picker it says uh, rgb 255 255 and 255 uh, for both rgb and i'm going to use flex flex boxes design so just to make it centered and what i'm going to do in here just going to do flex direction so all the styles are going to have like flex direction of uh, columns so they come uh, one beneath the other and for the other stuff we're going to have just testify contents to center so we're going to have centered horizontally then we're going to do align items um, to center it vertically so if you're not familiar with flexbox and how it works you can just go and check out a youtube video tutorial on my channel just search for flexboxes or you probably find it in the description below on how flexboxes basically works and why you should start using them asap and um, now what we're going to do we're going to create a class that's going to be representing the main uh, points for our tutorial. So it's gonna have the typewriter text and it's gonna be applied to every single text, either a div, a P for a paragraph or a span or any any kind of tag you would love to apply this typewriter animation to. You, you just add this class and there you go, you got the typewriter animation right out of the box. So I'm just gonna name it typewriter um, dash text. So simple as that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say first do overflow hidden. And why overflow hidden? Because we want the text to be, uh, actually we can we could always show the text, but overflow hidden, anything out of the bounding box, uh, is gonna be completely hidden. So we're not gonna see the text and that's how we can apply the animation. This is a really important um, rule to add for your CSS. And uh, we can do uh, position relative, this is not quite, you know it's it's you don't need to add that but it's quite optional but it's better to add it to have much more flexible style and animation working behind the scenes now for the width what you could do is actually you need to provide the full width of your text so depending on the length and the width of your text if you have like a really long text you need to provide more width in here if you have like just a small or two words text or anything you can just provide a small um width size in here because uh, you have to specifically specify that, otherwise the animation won't work perfectly. So you have to do that. For example, uh, the text you've seen earlier, I'm gonna use 18 uh, elementers so in here. Um, that's that's much better for me. So that's what I would like to use. And I'm gonna assign a border right. Now, why border right? Border right is basically gonna be used for uh, the blinking cursor you saw earlier. So for the blinking cursor effects, we need just to assign a border right to the container or to the typewriter text, to whatever text we got the text container. Then later on, we're just gonna have like, you know, apply animation to it. So every single time it blinks super fast. So it looks like a cursor as clear as in here. Uh, this is actually a cursor. So that's, that's the animation that we wanna achieve using the border right. So I'm gonna assign two pixels for the border right. Um, there you go. I'm gonna have a solid. Of course, I'm gonna do RGBA, and um, what I'm using that's why I'm not just putting uh, completely white because I'm gonna have some um, alpha. So I'm gonna have opacity, of course. So I'm gonna do 255, 255, 255. I'm gonna do 0.75 uh, just to have it a little bit transparent, and that will make the effect even more better. For now, we can do the font size. So the font size, I'm um, just gonna do about, uh, I don't know, 35 pixels would look amazing. And I'm gonna do white space. This one is also important. 
So depending on the font size, you could, uh, I don't know, you can give it a size of however you would like to style the text or anything. You can apply other text styles, you can change the color, do that type of things. But I have to add the white space because this property, what it allows us to do is to do not wrap the text because we're going to manipulate uh, around or throughout the animation. What we're going to do is manipulate the width of the container. So every single time over time, uh, the typing function, of course, we're going to increase the width. So every single time we show up a character and that's how we're going to apply the animation. So for me to make sure this animation works perfectly fine, we need to do white space, no wrap, which means we're not going to wrap the word if the if it doesn't fit into in the container. So we're not going to wrap the text into like two lines or three lines or so on and so forth. So we're going to do no wrap, which means it's not going to be wrapped. So it's going to be completely hidden as well as the overflow hidden helps doing that because it's going to hide everything outside of the bounding box. Uh, I'm going to do a white space and the last parameter we're going to be adding later on is actually animation. So before doing the animation, we need to add the keyframes of the animation. So if you're not familiar with animation, I'm uh, just going to give you a quick brief introduction to it or how it works. Um, for CSS animations, you've got keyframes. So each keyframe is going to represent like an interval of how the animation interacts. Like you've got from to, or you got like percentages, like from zero percent to fifteen percent. Apply this type of uh, style to uh, my container or to the tag I'm currently on to this class specifically. And for example, from fifty percent to hundred percent, apply another style and so on and so forth. So how that's how ex exactly the animation works. Uh, behind the scenes on the CSS. So you can clearly see in here, I'm going to first do a keyframes. So we declare keyframes and I'm going to just name this a typewriter. So the typewriter text or the typewriter animation is going to be very simple. So we're going to uh, got from. So this is actually a keyframe. The from is actually a keyframe and um, I'm going to give it width. So we start off with a zero uh, width, which means it's going to be completely hidden. Then we're going to start expanding it over time. So I'm going to do it too. So which width we wanted to have, of course, as I said before, uh, it's clear in here as we added the full width is going to be 18 EM. So uh, that means the full width of the text is going to be fitting is 18 EM. Uh, as I said before, it depends on your text. So if you have a really long text or a really short text, make sure to give it the right width to fit specifically for that particular text and to make the animation exactly works as expected to be. So we're going to have the width in here and I'm going to add 18 AM as we expected because that's the max width that it needs to finish with. And that's the uh, minimal width, which means completely hidden that it needs to start with. So that's simple as that. That's what a keyframes means. And that's how we can add our keyframes. The other thing we're going to do is actually add another keyframes for the blinking cursor. So we need to make the blinking cursor work. I'm going to do blink um, text cursor. And for this, we're also going to add the two things in here. So I'm going to do from and for the from for the from text in here, what I'm going to probably do is actually border. Um, so I'm going to do border right color. So every single time we change the color between um, the color that we have already added in here, which is RGB to 55 and we got it like 75% uh, of an transparency. So we're going to just toggle in between both of these states. So the right color, if first starts uh, showing off, then it goes to, which means we're going to just toggle between transparent, completely transparent and the white color. So that's how we should basically work uh, for the blinking cursor because the blinking cursor sometimes or between the intervals, it shows, then it hides, it shows and it hides. So that's basically how the animation works. So I'm going to just do a transparency and there you go. So it first shows uh, with its original color, the white color, a little bit transparent. Then it hides using it, the transparent color. So it completely hides. That's how we're going to create the animation. So both of these are the keyframes that we need for this, uh, the typewriter keyframe and the cursor blinking keyframe. So they both are really important for that. Now, the most important part is actually how we can apply the animation and what type of like tweaks or values we're going to be choosing for that particular animation. So if you don't know that, or if you're not familiar with the animation and how it works, so I'm just going to give you a quick and brief introduction, uh, how we're going to be creating it in here. So I'm just going to copy paste this. Uh, from my other screen over there. 
So what we're gonna do is actually gonna add this for you guys. There we go, just gonna add the comments. So for the animation, we're gonna have start off like an animation name is gonna be the typewriter. So we're gonna start it with this um, this animation name. We give it the name. We, for, we secondly give it the animation duration. So how much is gonna take to finish up the animation? And you can give it whatever duration you would like to uh, fast or you have it like very slow for the typing or anything like that. So you can you know tweak that out depending on your needs. So four seconds for this, we got the animation timing function. And this is a really important point is actually the timing function, how it needs to be. So for the steps function, what it does is it's actually going to create this, the, the number given between parentheses is going to create uh, about 44 intervals. What I mean by intervals is actually every single time it does a step and so on and so forth. So it's going to do a 44 steps. Uh, every single step is going to represent an interval. And to clearly understand more about that, I'm going to give you this, um, you know, under Mozilla developer. And I'm just going to give you the step uh, timing function for the animation. I'm going to show you how it works. So if we click play, as clear as seen here, we've got steps, we've got five till the end. We can just like remove that. That's actually optional. And we can start play. So clear as seen here, it plays depending on the steps provided. We provided five steps, so it does five steps. Each one uh, is different from the other. So, you know, it starts the first and it ends it, and it starts the other and it ends it, and so on and so forth. And that's how exactly uh, the animation uh, or the steps animation basically works. And that's perfectly fits for us because we're gonna create um, our typewriter animation function, which means every single time we do uh, like a typewriting or do an interval, which means typing is an interval, the other typing or the other character we're gonna type is actually another interval and so on and so forth. So that's basically how it's gonna be working for the steps timing function. So you can read more about this in uh, the developers.mozilla.org and you can search for uh, animation timing function on CSS. Simple enough. So that's actually for the steps. The other thing we need is actually the delay. What I mean by delay is how many is going to take, uh, how much it's going to take basically to like start off the animation. We got the animation counts. We only need to play the animation once and the direction is going to be normal. So we're not going to take it backward or forward. And um, the animation fill mode is actually both, which means we're just going to have like both backwards and forwards filling mode. So this is actually quite optional just to add it to make it much more smooth. Um, the problem with this is actually we can't apply it to two animations at the same time. So we have to do uh, the animation or the shortened property, which is the animation property. So we can do in here. So you're gonna take all of this and shorten it into a single property with all the values into it. And of course, we're also gonna apply the blink text cursor alongside that to the animation. So that's how we can apply two animations at the same time to a single class or a single uh, tag element. So what I'm gonna probably first start off is actually the animation name, as I've said before. So it's basically the same order in here. We're gonna apply the same order on the shortened property. So I'm gonna have typewriter. Uh, the second thing, I'm gonna have the delay or the duration basically for seconds. I'm gonna give it steps of 44. You can play off with the steps how, however you would like to. I'm uh, gonna give it one second, so the delay. Give it place once for the count, and of course, normal um, animation direction. And for the fill mode, I'm gonna just do both. So you separate this with a comma. Now we get back to line, and I'm gonna just specify the uh, blink cursor animation. So I'm gonna give it the name, blink text cursor. Uh, I'm gonna give it the time interval or the duration for every single interval. So I'm going to give it 400 milliseconds because it's, it's going to play fast. Um, I'm going to give it steps again. And for the steps, I'm going to play 44 to make it, you know, to synchronize between both of the animations. And I'm going to give it an infinite, which means it never ends. So it's not going to play once and stops. And um, for the uh, direction, it's going to be normal, which means forward for sure. And as simple as that. So that's basically how we apply the animation. And for CSS style has been done. Now we need to jump into the HTML. And of course, we need to like put the container and it puts like a typewriter text and we see the animation or the magic happens behind the scenes. So I'm going to just do uh, main container. And for sure, I'm going to do typewriter text. And I don't know, let's just go and do 
Um, I just put the same text that we've put before. So I'm gonna do um, CSS text animation or um, type writer CSS text animation. And we can include that. And I mistyped typewriter. There you go. And I had just mistakenly typed normal, so just type it correctly. And there you go. We got the animation working perfectly fine for the typewriter. And of course, the CSS animation that we have provided, as clearly seen here, it looks pretty, pretty dope, uh, pretty awesome. You can increase the font size in here just to make it look uh, a little bit bigger. I don't know, 38 pixels. Okay, 38 pixels. It should look much better and much clearer. So, as clear as in here, there you go, guys. You got your, you know, CSS typewriter animation uh, out of the box, and everything should be there. You're gonna find the sandbox right down in the description if you'd like to check it out. And hopefully, guys, you've enjoyed the video tutorials. I think guys for watching this setup before, and uh, yeah, put that like button, uh, push it basically, and for sure, don't forget to subscribe, share the video tutorials because I find a lot of people not subscribing, watching my videos. So that's quite, you know, embarrassing and not, not quietly as I anticipate it to be. So please guys, push that like button and of course subscribe. Make sure to subscribe because you're gonna find tons of other video tutorials on my channel, uh, news and stuff. And for sure, I've activated this notification bell. That's gonna mean the world for me. So thank you guys for watching, I'm sending it prepared. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed. So see you all, hopefully, in the next video tutorials.